Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's quick tip, I'd like to share a trick that you may be able to use to recover a corrupt video file you've recorded to the micro SD card in your drone. Now, here's the scenario. It was a beautiful Saturday. You've been out flying all day. You've captured some amazing footage, and you can't wait to get home and see what it looks like on your computer. So you race home, transfer the files to your computer, and sure enough, the one file you need, you can't play on your computer. You've tried every video player you have, and it's just not playing. You've got a corrupt file. And there's nothing more frustrating than losing footage you shot out in the field, and maybe it was that perfect shot of a lighthouse, or that beautiful lake, or maybe you're the one person that got that excellent aerial shot of the Jersey Devil down in the Pine Barrens in New Jersey, and you really need that and you can't get it back. So you've got a corrupt file. There's a few reasons this can happen. The first two I'm going to give you, I can't help you with, but I can help you prepare for those. The third one is the trick I'm going to give you to try and recover that file. So the first two have to do with the memory card itself. Now memory cards in general are miracle devices. They're modern technology that in a lot of ways shouldn't really exist. They're these tiny little slivers of silicon. In the words of Monty Python, they're way for thin <laughs> pieces of silicon that you're actually storing data on. It's a miracle of technology. They're fragile, which means physically you've got to take care of them. You can't drop them, you can't abuse them, you can't get them dirty. But even beyond that, electronically they're fragile. So that means in the memory card there are blocks, and that's what you actually store the data to. All of those memory cards have what's called a life, a wear life on them, where you can only write to those blocks so many times. And it also, in a lot of cases, uses a program to do something called wear leveling, where it's checking the blocks to see if the blocks are defective. And if it finds a defective block, it'll mark it as defective and move that data somewhere else. So there's constant... Um, chemistry and technology going on in that memory card that you're not aware of. And the challenge is, as the memory card gets older, it's less useful. So there is a lifespan of memory cards, and the one rule of thumb I'd go with on that is if you're using a memory card, I never like to fill up a memory card more than 75 or 80% of its capacity because when you get up above that 80% mark, you start getting up in that area where you've got all those defective blocks living and it starts to get a little bit sketchy. So always stick with a memory card that's big enough and use between, I'd say 75, 80% of it, maybe 90% would be pushing it on a new card. But if you used it for a year and a half, probably time to replace it. And that'll just save you a whole lot of headaches out in the field. The second thing is, there are a lot of gray market cards out there. So my strong suggestion is don't play around with a card that's priced too good to be true because that old adage is out there. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. That couldn't be truer than with memory cards. So stick with a brand name, buy it from a dealer you trust because again, I can tell you that 50 to 75% of the cards that you can buy in a lot of those online shopping sites are probably gray market or bootleg cards that seem like they're going to work until you get them out in the field and start putting data on them and you get all kinds of corruption. And again, nothing's more frustrating than losing an entire day's footage out in the field. So stick with a brand you know, stick with a dealer you know, don't fill it up more than 80%. The last thing I'll suggest, and this is super important, is when you're transferring the files from the memory card to your computer, always copy those files. Don't move those files. Because if you copy them, if there's a corrupt file, there's still a chance you can repair it on the memory card. And I'll explain that in a minute. But if you move them, you've now moved that off the memory card. And it's very difficult, again, to recreate that scenario on the memory card. So copy them to your computer. Don't move them. Now, if you stay tuned, I'll explain exactly how the recording process, in really simple terms, how the recording process happens and where this one error might occur that I can show you how to fix, hopefully, with this trick. So stay tuned, and I'll explain that next. With any digital recording, it all starts with the camera sensor that captures the images coming through the lens as pulses of light. These are converted into binary signals by a powerful video processor chipset and sent along to the memory card for recording. To record the video, when you press the record button, the processor first sends an open file command to the memory card to create a space for the actual recording. Next, the digital information from the processor is sent to this new file. When you stop the recording, the processor issues a close file command to complete the process. And this is how things normally work. The problem occurs when you interrupt this process before it finishes and cause the file to become corrupt. This typically happens when a pilot turns off the aircraft before the file is completely stored. Powering down can stop the data transfer from completing to the card or may result in the closed file command not being issued and the resulting file will become corrupt. Okay, now that you understand the fundamentals of how video recording works, you can see how a problem like this might crop up. And I'm going to call it pilot error, and I've been guilty of it myself. I've had corrupt files that I've recovered using this process. And what you've done, essentially, and what I've done, is interrupted that process of that really important data, that video data, finishing its path to the memory card. You've interrupted the conversation digitally to get all that data on the memory card, or 
it hasn't had a chance to do that close file command, which means you've got a file that nobody else can read because it needs a beginning and an end and a bunch of data in the middle. And if you don't do the close file command, it's not a valid file. So you can do that a couple of different ways. If you're like me, you may have pulled the memory card out too quickly and it hadn't finished, or you've turned the drone off before it's actually finished that processor or issued that close file command. Or a couple of times it's happened to me where I've been flying and I'm on location and maybe it's getting late in the day or I've got people rushing to me get that perfect shot and I've got to change out the battery. I'll land it, power it off, swap out the battery, put a new battery in and put it back up. And that's when I've had some files corrupt there because I haven't given enough time. So the recommendation is when you land the drone, just let it sit there for a couple of seconds and let it finish whatever process it's doing. Now, the chances of this being a problem for you, if you're one of those pilots that uses a cable to transfer the files from the drone to your computer, is really low because the minute you power it back up, if it hadn't finished out in the field, it'll probably finish in your office. But if you're like me and you're pulling a memory card out, especially if you pull the memory card out and move the files to your computer and then realize it's a corrupt file, you're in a whole lot of trouble. So the one thing you can try is if you've moved that file to your computer, move it back to the memory card, put it back in the drone, power it up, and cross your fingers. Now, I've had it, I've had it work 50%, maybe 70% of the time, where it's done a close file command, and I'm good to go. I can pull that file back over to my computer and it works perfectly. If I've caught it during a data write where it hadn't gotten all the data over to the card, those are the ones that I can't recover. And you have to remember that inside the drone, there's a buffer. And the buffer is essentially a digital balloon that'll absorb all the extra data that can't make it out of the card because that processor is moving data really quickly, especially for high resolution or, or large files that you're recording out in the field. There's no way it can write to the memory card, especially if you're using a, a less costly memory card that doesn't have the, a fast write speed on it. So that buffer is going to blow up like a balloon. And as it can write data to the card, it's going to empty the balloon at the air out of the balloon. But if you interrupt that process before all that data gets out of the balloon to the memory card, you're going to have these kind of problems. So that's pretty much it for today. I hope that made a lot of sense. This is a trick that I've used a bunch. I've had pilots ask me how to fix corrupt cards. And I've said to them, try this trick and it's worked. So it's one of those things you can keep in your back pocket. That's really worked for me a lot out in the field. And it's one of those I wanted to pass along to you guys. So hopefully you're having a lot of fun flying and this trick helps you out of a tricky situation on your card. Um, if there's any questions you've got about what I've talked about today, please drop those in the comments below. I have a ton more clips I'm working on right now. I've got reviews coming out for some of the newer drones that are going on. We've got a lot of our high tech stuff that I'm going to be reviewing on the channel as well. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that button down there and subscribe and turn the bell on. I have a lot of drone giveaways coming up in the next month or two, and you're definitely going to want to get in on those because there's some really cool drones that we're going to be giving away on the channel and bigger ones as well that you're definitely going to want to take a shot at. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. And that's pretty much it for today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're getting value out of these clips. I'm having a heck of a lot of fun putting them together. So hopefully you guys are enjoying them. And until next time, happy flying. Thank you.